In today's video, I'm going to make Gonad the Barbarian. Welcome to dropping your miniature on TikTok. And now your inbox is full of requests about how cheap they can make a model. So the primer that I have is black. And as you've noticed in every video I've made, I've started every single statue that I've made with a black base. And in this case, that was not going to be good enough to lay down the greens. So at first I put down a bleached bone and then I used a bit of a skeleton bone to just add a little bit more color into that. I then went in with Unforgiving Green and that was the base color for the snake. I used Exile Green after that and I used that in the highlight places all over the snake making sure that I kept the lights towards the top. Using technical paint, Armageddon Dust, I'm gonna just go over all the sandy bits on this sort of stair base, the skull stuck in it. I'm now gonna use Skeleton Bone and I'm gonna go back into the underbelly of the entire snake. And I'm just gonna do this with my airbrush. I'm not even gonna mask it off and uh, hopefully it works out. Um, so I took my time doing that, making sure that it was all perfect. After I'd done that, I took a Agrax Earthshade and I just threw that all over the brown that I put on the base. The technical paint that I had put down, it has almost like sand in it, so this helps to give quite a lot of texture to that base. Using Bleach Bone straight with my paintbrush, this is an airbrush paint from Army Painter. I still use it with my paintbrush as if it were a normal paint and I painted all the whites inside the inside of the mouth. I used that same color through the airbrush and I came back all over the top of the skulls and highlighted every single one of them so that they were actually lovely white skulls. This paint from Army Painter is their new airbrush set and I find it goes through the airbrush really, really well. I don't have to thin it as much as some paints you need to, but I do tend to thin some of the whiter colors a bit. I used that same color to go over the fur on the boots so that I wasn't going over a black when I had to come and paint that white fur on his feet. Using red leather from uh, Ammo by Mig, I'm going to dry brush that all over the base. I'm going to work my way up from that red leather up to burnt sand and I'm going to just sort of dry brush that in all the spaces on the base just to start adding a bit of variation to the color. I then used Reichland Flesh Shade and I went into all the eyes and I added that to every single eye socket and nose socket on all the skulls on the base. Using Green Base from Ammo by Mig, I dry brushed that over the scales in all the highest spots on the snake's body. It's time to start on Gonad himself and I started off Gonad black as per usual and I used burnt flesh as my base color for this instance. Because Conan is quite a tanned person, this is an old movie and he was quite a bronze looking character so I wanted to start off with quite a dark base. I then started working reddish flesh over the top of that and I then moved on from the reddish flesh into a base flesh. And I went from the base flesh straight up to fairy flesh because I was going to come back and I was going to add a bit of yellows into the skin. In general, I will usually add grimoire purple, which I did do, but I also added Reichland flesh shade because I wanted it to have a darker tanned olive look to his skin, just like how he is in the movies. I then come back again, and this is just a process of layering, and I come back in again with mixtures of natural flesh, medium flesh, fairy flesh, even base flesh and I keep working that up. In areas where I felt like the skin was too lifeless because these colors do seem to look a bit desaturated after you've laid them quite a lot on top of each other, um, I will come back with grimoire purple really really thin and you can see it where his skin looks a little bit pinker 
and this just tends to bring life back into the skin and makes this colors that you've picked not look too desaturated because unfortunately skin is not just a skin set that will make your skin look like skin there's a lot of colors that make up the skin um, and it's worth doing as many layers as you can in order to get that look out of the skin So this is just airbrushing a very thin down fairy flesh over the top. You can see how I've thinned it down in the airbrush. It's still fully saturated, but being thinner like it is, it doesn't cover on the first pass. So you can use that to your advantage and do a couple of passes. Um, I will do a major pass over the top and then I'll go back in and sort of focus areas of highlight that I want to push. Here you can see me mixing up the wash that I'm using on him. I made it super thin. It is a Reichland flesh shade. I added a bit of contrast medium to that, as well as I added uh, quite a bit of water to that to make it quite thin. And I airbrushed that mostly from the bottom of the model because this will be where the shadows are. I didn't want any darkness coming from the top. I wanted the shadows to be deep, rich, golden brown just like he'd been standing in the sun for all of his life, like the barbarian he is. I came back to the brute again, and I laid down a base of charred bone. Charred bone is also an airbrush paint that I used from Army Painter's new set. These paints work amazingly for airbrushing and for painting like normal. I feel like this is going to be a very consistent paint for me in my sets of paint that I have. I used leather brown from Army Painter and I painted the boots. I just pretty much gave them a gentle base coat, nothing too crazy, no real shades or anything. And then I used a uh, Saigor Contrast Brown to paint the straps on all the boots. Um, I started painting the straps and realized that I perhaps should start the next stage before I do that. And so I washed those boots with Reichlin Flesh Shade again. You'll notice I used the same shade for a lot of the shade areas that I do, um, generally I don't use washes in things as much, but in this case because it's fur that's going to be the easiest way to get colour into the recesses and just brush over the top of them which will give you a really good looking fur with a lot less effort. Um, but using the same color washes helps bring everything together in the piece. You have the same kind of color tones, the same sort of warmth coming through, and it just helps bring the whole piece together and make it look like one piece. So here I went with the dry brush, and crazily enough, I used the airbrush paint for the dry brush too. For this I use skeleton bone, um, I work my way from skeleton, technically I use charred bone but I mix charred bone and skeleton bone and I work my way up all the way till I got to bleached bone. So this is one of the triads from that airbrush set, um, I didn't use it because it was a triad, it's just the colours that I picked that I felt worked extremely well for exactly what I was going to do with it, particularly that fur on his boots. Using contrast Saigor Brown, I painted that ball sack thing that goes between his legs and I painted his underpants. I prepared myself a new paper towel, uh, my old paper towel was getting a little bit manky. And this is where I just used the exact same process that I did on his feet fur. I base coated it with charred bone and I allowed that to dry. I'll come back and wash that later. I then used the Saigor brown around his belt. I used leather brown and fur brown to highlight the belt and to highlight certain parts on the scrot sack ball cover thing that he has. After I put the wash on his uh, fur skirt, I then dry brushed that with starting with charred bone, going to skeleton bone and working my way up to bleach bone. I then went back into the belts and made sure that the belts had uh, their color was nice and solid 
and I was going back in and just highlighting a couple of areas again using the leather brown and fur brown also from Army Painter. There's nothing too fancy about the belt, um, perhaps a couple of scuffs here and there, um, just really a little bit of dotting of extra colour so that the belt doesn't look plain and boring. I felt that the stomach or the soft underbelly of the snake was just too dark and muddy for me so I went back and I dry brushed that. I, I actually did that a couple of times during painting this. Um, I wanted to lighten it more and more but again I didn't want to draw attention away from Gonad. Here you can see me mixing up the 5 minute epoxy and this is the point that I need to explain. The cuts on this model are probably the worst cuts I've ever dealt with. His feet are part of the base and those parts don't just fit into each other because it's a it's almost like a ball joint where the part that goes into the female part is actually bigger than the opening of the female part so these parts don't fit each other at all um i struggled but i got it done in the end i had to cut off all the keys and just shove it in and eventually i got it in this is where you can see painting the white into the mouth helps me a lot i now went into that with Bugman Glow and this was going to be the base for the inside of my mouth. I used Magos Purple which is a contrast paint and I just slapped that all on the inside of the mouth because I wanted it to look goopy, gory and gross. It's the inside of a mouth. Um, using Bleach Bone I worked on the eyes a little bit and brought the highlights a little bit higher and I went in with Green Base from Ammo by Mig to highlight certain areas on the head and face. I felt like his tongue needed to be black but not all the way black so I did a fade of black I basically mixed green into my black and a bit of white so that it would be easier to transition between the colors and I made the tips of his tongue black Working on Arnie's torso now, at first I'd painted his hair in charred bone and I realised I absolutely hated that colour because his hair is definitely darker than that. So I started painting other parts of the rest of his portrait to try and figure out how dark I needed to make that hair. Um, using Saigor Brown contrast paint, I painted the headband and the other little leather pieces that are around his head as well as the necklace on him. It's at this point that I needed to let things dry again, so I went in to add some subtle detailing onto the back of the snake's head. I mean essentially it is a cobra, but there was no real cobra that I could find that matched Conan fighting it, so um, yeah, that's what I did. It's a very subtle effect, it looks very dark, but once it dries it's quite subtle. I went back into the mouth again and obviously after painting the teeth white I took gloss and I glossed all of the eyes, I glossed the teeth, the mouth, the tongue, we want that to be shiny and wet. I painted his sword in Green Stuff World's Chrome Metal. I haven't used this paint before but I ran it through my airbrush and it is, it's chrome. I then used the bronze to edge line the sword, there's these two little things that go up the side and I used that same bronze to do the hilt and the handle. I then had decided on the hair colour and the hair colour that I chose to go with was chipping from Ammo by Mig. I used that as a base and I took a bit of Reichlin flesh as a shade to get some depth into it. I'm now going to use the same epoxy and I had to grind out loads of his inside fur skirt just to get his torso to go in. Uh, this is stuff I didn't record before I started making and painting him. I used that 5 minute epoxy because the last thing I need is for it to be stuck as soon as I stick it in. I needed a good few minutes to fiddle and make sure that it was right. And that's pretty much that. And then I came back in whilst it was on and I did a couple of highlights here and there. A little bit of dry brushing on the hair just to try to bring some more of that highlight out again. 
I also used a satin varnish on all of his skin and I airbrushed that on so I came back at the end and added a matte varnish to his hair just so that his hair didn't look like he came out of the shower five minutes ago. And that's pretty much it. As usual if you enjoyed that video please give it a like leave a comment down below and if you enjoyed it enough perhaps consider giving a subscription because for every subscription that you subscript I get one more subscription also I would like to say a special thanks to my patrons we have now got a discord and discord is going extremely well a couple of people have had some helpful tips a couple of people have showed us some amazing models I will in future be showing some of the models that my Patreon are painting. Some of the work is incredible. Also, my light just went off, which means I need to get to the part of the video where I tell you, if you liked all of what you saw, then hang around, perhaps subscribe, go look at the Patreon, check out my Amazon links, but if you don't like any of that, click dislike and f*** off bro.